What's going on guys? Welcome back to the shop or welcome to the shop. What do we got going on today? We're working on a series cart that does not run. All right. I'm going to call this episode my solenoid episode because so many people think that when their cart doesn't run, the solenoid's bad. And if they don't hear it clicking, the solenoid's bad. Or if they hear it clicking and it doesn't run, the solenoid's bad. But we're going to show you today that that's not always the case. I know solenoids are cheap. Everybody wants to run out and throw one on thinking that's going to fix them up, but that's not always the case. I'm going to show you how to diagnose it to save you that, what, 20, 30 bucks, some even more, depending on where you buy it. Anyways, let's get into it. Let's drag this thing into the shop, dive into the issue, and see what we got going on. Catch you back in the shop. shop hey we got a series cart in the shop and it won't run so get this question a lot my cart won't run what's wrong with it these are the troubleshooting steps that I take on the series cart to uh, check and see if they're not running or check and see what's wrong why they're not running and uh, what the symptoms are we got the key switch turned on we press the gas and uh, the solenoid doesn't engage so uh, most people immediately would assume the solenoid is bad and they're going to go ahead and change out the solenoid but it's not necessarily what's wrong and i'm going to show you why and uh, we're going to go through the troubleshooting steps to figure out what the problem is before we just start throwing parts at this thing so let's get into it all right so first off like i said we're working on a series cart how do we know it's a series cart we've got this Ford and reverse module over here on the side. It's connected to a rod here, and we switch directions up here on the front. Uh, that's a pretty typical setup on the EasyGo TXT series carts, uh, the, the newer series carts. The older Marathon carts, they're series two, but the Ford and reverse is mounted right here, um, right behind where the knob is. Uh, but anyways, let's talk a little bit about how this system works and uh, how we're gonna check things so first off um, we get power from over here in the charge box or charge receptacle from the reed switch the reed switch is this wire here and it's a magnetic switch that disables the cart um, while you're charging it so you can't drive off with it plugged in that's a often a very common failure point are these reed switches and most of the time uh, what people do is they just bypass them and this one has not been bypassed, so we're gonna test and make sure it's working properly. So for that, I use my test light. I've got it hooked up to the main negative of the battery pack. We're gonna check it to make sure it's working, it is. And this reed switch feeds power to this red wire. It goes through this loom and it goes to the center post, um, these two top um, poles on these forward and reverse uh, micro switches here. So we just probe that and we should be getting power, which we are. So that lets us know that the reed switch is working. That power should feed to the top of these two switches. You can see down in there and it's got this jumper in between them. If it's not, it's not wired properly. So you need to put this red wire that comes from the reed switch over here, all right? From there, it's gonna switch on one of these switches depending on which direction you have the directional selector in all right in forward or reverse both directions this switch on the driver's side right here is going to turn on all right and power is flowing through it we can see that it's in forward now power is flowing through it now i'm going to switch it to reverse and watch what happens as it goes through neutral cuts off but it cuts back on when it goes to reverse all right so we know power is flowing through that switch from here, it goes up to the key switch off of this blue wire right here. It goes through a loom all the way up to the key switch. You can take this off and test it, or what you can do is the power returns back to the controller on this green wire. So if you don't want to take your key switch off just yet, this plate, you can test it down here on this green wire that's coming back out of the loom. Uh, it's hard to see. Let me cut my light on so you can see. 
Maybe you can see down in there. See that blue wire and that green wire going to the loom together. So what we can do is I'm gonna set the camera down and we're gonna unplug the green wire and we're gonna probe it for power. And make sure you're probing the right one. The dark green one is the one that goes up to the switch with the female end on it. And if you can see, the light's working. So the key switch is working. Now, I just took the plate off just to show you guys uh, how it's wired. So you don't have to take that off, but if you weren't getting power returning on this green wire, then you would go up and test the key switch. So I'll show you how to do that. We'll test the key switch. Again, we said power's coming through the blue wire up here. We wanna test that first to make sure it's getting all the way up here, and it is. That wire could be broken in the loom somewhere. So it's working. Now we'll probe the green one with the key turned on and it's lit up. So the key switch is working. We're getting power up to it and coming back all the way to the controller. Now, where does it go from here? From here, it goes up to the pedal switch, all right? The pedal box. So what I like to do is um, one way to test it, it goes to the pedal switch and it comes back through this four-way Molex connector here on um, the red wire. It goes out on the green, comes back on this red wire that you see in this connector here, all right? The easiest way to test to see if the pedal switch is working is to probe this positive pole on the solenoid while you give it gas, all right? So I'm gonna probe it and we'll give it gas and we're gonna see if it lights up. Give it gas, click, nothing, all right? Now, that's where people think, oh, the solenoid's bad, I need to replace it. No, it's not because it's not getting power there. This side is ground, it's grounded, so it should be getting power from the pedal switch to activate, and it's not. So, we found our issue. Power is not making it from this green wire, either to the switch or back from it. So it's somewhere in the wiring that goes over to the pedal switch. So, just for the video's sake, I have taken the mat up. This is the pedal switch, it's under the dash, under the driver's side. Here's that green wire that feeds power from the key switch, right? Here's the red wire that returns back to the solenoid to activate it, all right? We're gonna probe this green wire. We should be getting power there, even without pressing it, because that's the feed wire. We're not getting anything. Notice my light's not lit up, all right? This return wire goes back. We're definitely not gonna get anything when I press the gas, because we're not getting any feed to it. So we know that it's in the wiring harness, the brake in the wire, or the bad spot, whatever, is in this wire coming to the switch, not leaving it, it's not the solenoid. So let's look under the cart and see if we find any issues with this wire here. It could be broken, it could be corroded, uh, there's all sorts of things that could have happened. But let's look under the cart and see what we find. All right, here we are under the cart. Sorry I didn't have the forklift, but to get under it good it's being used right now but check this out this is exactly how i found the wire hanging down and look at this i don't know if you can see it or not but there's a spot let's see if i get my pointer here there's a spot right there where the wire's been damaged someone's hit something and it's pinched it and i don't know if you can tell good on the camera or not i'm trying to get some light on it for you but it's also got some corrosion in there too so chances are the wire got nicked and then it started building corrosion up. Now the corrosion is completely uh, cut through the wire and stopped the current. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut this apart, pull the sheathing back, we're gonna splice it back together, put it back together, and we should, uh, we should be up and going. So I'm gonna do that repair. I'll bring you back and show you how I did it. And then we're gonna test it and see if it's working from there. spot cut out we stripped the wires back and we spliced everything together black to black white to white red to red green to green we're going to wrap this up with some electrical tape so it doesn't get water in it and uh, this was hanging down so I'm going to zip tie this up so it doesn't get caught you can see where they've hit it hit it pretty hard they bent the frame 
Uh, but anyways, we'll get this back together. We're gonna hook the batteries back up and we're gonna see if it runs. All right, we got it fixed from the bottom. All the wires spliced together. We got the battery wires hooked back up. Let's see if it runs. Oh, there's a click. And she's a runner. That's it, guys. Well, again, just because the solenoid doesn't come on doesn't mean it's bad. Keep that in mind. People are solenoid happy sometimes, it seems like. They always want to change the solenoid. But uh, proper diagnosis saves you some money and some headache. So that's how you do All it. All right, so I know you're going to ask me, how do I tell if the solenoid truly is bad if that's the problem? All right. First thing, we're going to test two different things. We're going to test the coil to make sure that we're getting power to it. So what I do is I have my test light on negative. I'm going to probe the positive, and then I'm going to give the cart gas. I'm going to try and hold the camera and the light. Give it gas, the light comes on. That lets me know power is going to the solenoid on this red wire, all right? We hear it click. We know this one's working, obviously. But if you're getting power here and it doesn't click, it could be bad. The next thing you want to test is the ground side to make sure it's grounded. So how do you do that? Take your test light, or you can do it with a voltmeter, just testing voltage. You're going to clip to the main positive, and you're just going to probe it for ground. When it lights up, it means you have ground. So if you're getting ground, and you're getting power here when you click the, uh, the foot pedal when you give it gas and the light comes on or you get voltage. That means the solenoid coils are bad and you need to replace it. It's actually bad. Now, how do we check uh, if that's working? It's clicking, but it's still not running. And we still think the solenoid's bad. We need to make sure that power is passing through the solenoid, all right? So this side of the solenoid over here is the side that's connected to the main positive of the battery pack. So let's check to see if power is getting through it. We're going to move our clamp to negative. Our light's on. We should get power up to this post, which we do. Now we're going to test this side over here. Now my light's going to come on, but it's going to be dimmer because it's burning through that resistor. See how it's dim? Now watch what happens when I give it gas. clicks and it gets brighter. It's not running through that resistor anymore. It's running through the main contact. Now I let off of it, it turned off, and now it's going back to a dim state because it's only running through this pre-charged resistor. This controller needs a small amount of power to feed the capacitors in it before it cuts on or that inrush of current could mess it up. That's why that resistor there, that's why it's called a pre-charge resistor. Anyways, that's how you test the solenoid to see if the solenoid's bad. And in this case, it's working because we get power on the red, and we give it throttle, it clicks, and it passes current through it. Talk about a few other issues that you could be having other than what we've covered. One thing to check is this Molex connector here, this four pin. A lot of times these get corroded and can go bad, and you won't get power through them, so you always check that, and it's good, and then check it on the cart side too. It's good. No corrosion. Nothing's burned out. So that's just one thing to keep in mind to check those uh, if you're not getting power. We've already checked this one. We know it's good, but just wanted to show you guys that. If you have any questions, leave them below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. If you want to see more content like this, and check back on the next video. We'll see you next time in the shop.